I was never a person that did a lot of planning. The uh, short-term planning for me was what I do tomorrow morning. Medium-term planning is what I do tomorrow afternoon. And long-term planning is what I do tomorrow night. The, uh, and I say that with tongue-in-cheek. But I have learned, and I did learn over the years, I learned so many things over the years, the need to be a planner. The need to have dreams, and the need to have a vision, etc. The, uh, and the, uh, hopefully what you hope to do is you can turn these dreams into the future. A, a, into reality in the future, you know. They, uh, and so when I think about what's going to happen over the next 10 years, and it is a bit of a, a dreaming, right? But it's a basis of using all my experience, my intuition, and saying, well, what progress are we going to make? And so uh, taking all that, I have tremendous confidence about the future. I have tremendous confidence in the future because of young people. Young people are more intelligent, are better, better educated, they're fitter, they, and they're more caring about social injustices than any other generation has been in the past. So I take all these things and I do, and I can answer what I think about what's going to happen in 10 years' time. And I think in 10 years' time, this will be a great world. I think the business world will have gone through tremendous changes. And I think we will, in a lot of organisations, uh, reduce the size of our businesses. The, uh, because, you know, our businesses now have, have come through... Uh, tremendous periods of growth. And what we're beginning to recognise is that the bigger you are, the dumber you are. The, the bigger you are. The reason why governments are so inefficient is because of the size that they are. And so often businesses become that way. Businesses become too big. They, uh, and I don't necessarily mean by too big being that you've got hundreds of people or thousands of people. You can just be too big by adding some fat about you. And I think that we'll go through a period and we'll end up in the year 10 years from now, where businesses will have, not have any fat. They, they'll say, quite simply, we're going to operate at the stick and we'll have the core that we need to run our business and we'll outsource the, uh, the, the other services that we need. And I remember that the, in, in our business, we, we made a very, very big uh, period of acquisition the, uh, in the early 1980s. We went from 50 centres to about uh, 235, 240 centres within a period of nine months. And uh, we then entered what we call, and we called it years afterwards with a smile on our face, a period of profit sabbatical. The, uh, we never had a, a time whereby we made losses, but uh, during that period, because of the expansion that we did, the, uh, our profits took a dip. And we we found out that we weren't as good as what we thought we were. We found out that we didn't have the, the talent the, or the ability or the training or the skills or the experience to run a business the size that that had become overnight almost. What we had, we had the energy, we had the enthusiasm. We were the best tyre operators and exhaust operators in any country in the world that I've ever come across. But we needed skills to help us. Because there was no way of business, no matter what size we were, even when we grew to a business of 12,500 people operating 2,300 outlets throughout the world, there was no way that we could justify having every talent that we required 52 weeks a year, the uh, day in and day out. The worst projects that we had, whether it be in computerised developments, whether it be in marketing, whether it be in just training programmes, helping us develop new training programmes, that we had to go to outside sources. They, and use their talent. That outside person or organisation, they come in with a fresh approach. They, uh, they come in, with, but, but they're, ex they're excited about the job. And often the people in their own business, right, they uh, are, I've got a wee bit tired they, uh, of trying to resolve that problem. Uh, the, uh, so they've lost a bit of their excitement and it's invigorating and everybody benefits they, when you get it right. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, what we'll do is we'll make businesses more efficient and more cost-effective than they are at the present moment. And it'll create, it'll create a lot more employment for everybody. Governments can't do it on their own. The, uh, there's no point in governments just issuing an another headline grabber. The, uh, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. The more promises they make, there's one guarantee you can be sure of. The more promises will fail and more will be let down. And I think there's a new realisation coming about and that businesses are being seen to be able and the, uh, the governments, they are looking at these able organisations and saying, how can we work closer to the, with them? And if we can have business and governments working closer together, then I think that at the end of the day, we can overcome a lot of the problems and look forward to a really bright future.